Shabbat Shalom, everyone. This week's Torah portion is the Shabbat before Tisha B'Av. But on this particular year, it's actually going to be read on Tisha B'Av because tomorrow, starting tonight, is the ninth day of Av. But we don't fast on Shabbat, so it's postponed to Sunday. And the root of the tragedy of the Temple's destructions our rabbis say is rooted in this week's Torah portion, which always coincides with the Shabbat before Tisha B'Av. This week's Torah portion, it tells the story of the 12 spies and how they came back and said, the cities are too powerful and strong and fortified and we saw giants there and we felt like grasshoppers and we can't conquer it. And everyone began to weep. And God saw the Jews weeping when they were promised the land of Israel. And instead of celebrating, they were crying and God said, You've cried tears in vain. This will become a permanent day of weeping. And indeed, both temples, first by the Babylonians and then by the Romans, was destroyed on the ninth of Av. But the question is, what was the sin of the spies? They came back. They were fearful. They were overwhelmed. They were frightened. How could you punish someone for having fear? Fear is an instinct. It's an emotion. If someone is afraid of something, you can't punish them for being fearful. So what was the sin of the spies? So here we find something fascinating. The spies come back and they say, we came to the land, it's a beautiful land, the fruit is great, but the people there are giants and the cities are fortified. And therefore, how are we gonna conquer fortified cities? We don't have helicopters, we don't have drones. How are we gonna get over the fortified cities and win? But here's the fascinating idea. How did they know to focus on fortified cities? It was Moses actually who told them, go to the land and see if the cities are fortified. So they came back and said, yeah, they are fortified. We can't conquer it. But here's what our rabbis explained to us. Moses said to them, go see if the cities are fortified. You know why? Because what Moses was saying is not that if the cities are fortified, that means we cannot conquer the land. But on the contrary, if the cities are fortified, that means we can conquer the land. Why? Because what Moses was saying is that who puts up walls around their cities? People who are secure or insecure. They assume secure people and therefore we can't conquer it. But Moses was saying just the opposite. If they put up walls, that means they're insecure. They're not confident. A person who's afraid of the outside world puts up more defense systems to protect themselves and insulate themselves from the world that they're afraid of. If they're truly strong and confident, they won't need fortified cities. So the sin of the spies was not fear, it was perspective. They looked at the same walls that Moses looked at. Moses said, if they're fortified cities, that means the people there are weak and we can conquer it. They looked at the same walls and concluded that if the cities are fortified, that means they're strong. And the question is, what was the root of their interpretation of the walls versus Moses's? And the answer again is found in tomorrow's reading. They conclude and they say, because of God's hatred of us, he took us out of the land of Egypt to die and be decimated in the desert and in the war against the people in the land of Canaan. In other words, underlying their fear and their negative perspective was a belief that God hated them. And this makes all the difference in the world and life. When you believe God loves you, then when you see big walls, you don't become afraid of those walls and those challenges. On the contrary, you say, God loves me and these walls are for me to penetrate, to overcome. Everyone has challenges in life. The difference is how you perceive your challenges, how you interpret your challenges, which is based on your underlying belief in does God love you? Does the world love you? Do you love yourself? And if you have that faith in Hashem's love for you, then you know that nothing's impossible. On the contrary, the challenges in your path are not there to impede you, but to propel you. And in life, indeed, everything is your attitude, your perspective, your interpretation, your mindset. Tell a story about a father and a son. In the olden days, they lived on a farm and the son took care of the father. The father was 95 and the son stayed home and worked the field and provided for his father. The winter was coming and there was only one coat that they owned. So the father and the son began to discuss it. Who's gonna wear the coat during the winter? The son said, well, I'm in the field every day. I'm freezing, I have to wear it. You're inside, you don't need the coat as much. The father said, yeah, but I'm 95. My bones are old and frail. I'm gonna freeze to death. So they got into an argument. So they went to the rabbi to resolve it. Who gets the one coat? 
The rabbi listened and said, you know, indeed the son is right. He should get the coat because after all, he's out in the field. You're inside. You'll find a way to protect yourself. Well, the winter came and got freezing cold and the son wore the coat, as the rabbi said. But then he would come home and see his father shivering. And he had so much compassion for his father. He said, you know what, dad, you take the coat. I'll manage somehow without the coat. The father said, no. The rabbi said, you get the coat. And now they started arguing, each one saying the other one should get the coat. So they went back to the rabbi. The rabbi listened and the rabbi said, you know what, one second. He went into his bedroom and he says, I happen to have an extra coat. I'll lend it to you. You could use my extra coat and you'll both have a coat. The father and the son were delighted, but now the father turned to the rabbi and said, Rabbi, we came to you months ago. Why didn't you tell us you had an extra coat then? And the rabbi said the following. He said, when each one of you came and argued, it's my coat, I deserve it. So that energy is contagious. We all reflect each other and mirror each other's emotions and hearts. And I started to feel what mine is mine. And I didn't even think of giving you my coat. But when you came and argued selflessly, each one saying the other one should get it, the other one should deserve it, that subconsciously triggered a memory and an emotion in me to want to give. Suddenly I remembered I actually have another coat. In life, it's all your attitude. When you approach life with the proper attitude, then you succeed. Then you attain redemption, freedom. You achieve your promised land like the Jews in tomorrow's Torah portion who ultimately came into the land of Israel when they acquired the faith and the proper perspective. But when we don't believe in ourselves, when we don't believe in Hashem's love for us, when we take a negative perspective and interpretation looking at the walls around us, then tragically that leads to Tisha B'Av, it leads to destruction, it leads to mourning. And therefore tomorrow's Torah portion reminds us of the story of the spies as we approach the ninth of Av to remind us it's not what lies ahead of you, before you, but it's what lies within you and your vision. And that's why tomorrow is called the Shabbat of vision. If we attain the right vision and perspective, we will achieve redemption both personally and collectively as a nation. Shabbat Shalom.